Right, so, as you're all aware, Chelsea beat Man City last month, putting us through to the FA Cup final, and it was announced not long after that football fans would be making their long away at return to stadiums that day. And being the super top blue, up the proper Chelsea number one fan that I am, I simply had to be there. But then, Chelsea announced that you'd need a season ticket in your own name in order to go, crushing my dreams as I've been going to games on spare tickets since I was five years old. So, after elaborate plans to sneak in that definitely didn't include conspiracy to commit fraud, I accepted I was consigned to watching in my front room while my friends and family got to see it live. <sighs> but then, as one door closed, another door opened. Yes, a message from work offering me a shift at the cup final. After a quick scan of the Wembley Stadium map trying to work out if I'd be in sight of the pitch, I accepted the shift and dreamt of the sneaking into the FA Cup final gone wrong I was sacked video title. The day before the final they changed my role to food runner, which just screamed stuck in the kitchen underground, nowhere near the pitch, but at this point it was my only way in and it sounded like a better view than I got at Everton away. So after working out how to do a lateral flow Covid test, my negative result meant that I was all set up and ready to go to Wembley, knowing full well I may not even be able to watch the game, but it was a gamble I hoped would pay off. Woke up, got dressed in smelt trousers and one of my dad's shirts. Not quite the aqua scoot in the Stone Island you'd normally see on the terraces, but I still managed to get my colours on me. Get on the tube at South Wimbledon, off at Wembley Park. Even in the pissing rain on my way to work, with no football fans around, the walk down Wembley Way is an absolute buzz. Not to do the whole, if you don't go to games, you're not a real fan, bollocks, because it's obviously nonsense. But this is definitely one of those little things that the international or armchair fan just won't be able to appreciate, and why the FA Cup will always be more special to match goers compared to those that don't. Get lost trying to find my entrance. While I try to find where I'm meant to go, I take a guess at where I'll be positioned. Mmm, there. Arrive at the staff entrance, sign in, get wristbanded up, then get into the stadium. I've done it, I made it in. I got told where to go but didn't listen and just aimlessly walked upstairs before I eventually found people queuing in a corridor that had walls that looked like the start of a Bond film. They tell me to go up to level 3, so I go up this staircase and come out some nice looking concourse facing the complete opposite direction to the pitch. I then get told by some guy who looked a bit like Jawain from Phone Shop that I was actually on level 2, so I head down and realise I'm completely lost again but a lot closer to the pitch. I get told to go to room number 9, but when I get there they tell me that I'm in the Wembley suite. This photo here is the last one I was able to take before they made us put our phones in green bags of censorship. So in the middle bit of the video will be covered by Google Images, stock photo and my limited animation skills. Enter the Wembley suite. It looks fucking paying, not gonna lie. There's an entrance to the stands and like 10 TVs on every wall, which is promising as I'm fully intending to spend my entire shift watching the game. I then get told by some woman to put an apron on and go next door to the kitchen. That's the really loud, hot, isolated, absolutely zero phone connection, no view of the pitch or TV kitchen that only two of a hundred staff get sent to. Of course it is. I walk in and three chefs are ready and waiting to bully me. You lost mate, what are you doing here? Uh, I don't think so, I'm working as a runner. A runner? Go and do a lap then, I'll time you. Funny, funny man he was. Oi, whoever runs Wembley, seriously get this guy out the kitchen and on the stage for his own stand-up show. He's a genius, comedic legend, seriously, I'm still laughing now. Twat. My boss comes in and introduces me to the other runner, who is a Spanish woman who claims to be close friends with Kepa and tells me that he was really good for Bilbao. I let her know in the kindest possible way that he, penalties aside, is fucking useless. The boss tells us that we're serving the highest up people imaginable, and if Prince Philip wasn't in a box, then he, then the royal family would be there. So naturally, he tells me to stand by the tea and coffee machine in the corner and let everyone else go out there and serve the guests. In the hours before kickoff, as Wembley starts to fill up with excited fans, I'm standing on my ones in the corner watching plates of steak and lobster ravioli go out, with my chances of watching the game decreasing by the minute. I pass the time thinking about what VIPs might be next door to me, and if any of them are subscribed to my channel. Just before kickoff, I'm sent out to help clear the plates away. Yes, I was in the room with the TVs. If I could just stay there for a bit, then I'd be able to watch the game. Fuck me, that's Peter Cech. I know I have zero evidence of this, but you're just going to have to believe me here, lads. Peter Cech was standing two feet away from me, talking to Marina Granoskia and Bruce Buck, while I was holding the dirty plates of other guests in the room, which included Richard Masters, Rick Parry, and the owners of Leicester City. I love Peter Cech. In school, I was a fucking loser and spent 80 quid on special goalkeeper gloves with his name on. No way I was going to miss my chance to speak to him just because I was cleaning away some horrible dishes. So I waited, like a good little stalker, until he finished his conversation and then I approached him and came across like an absolute gimp. Oh, Petter, I love you. 
<laughs> Honestly, lads, I came across like a right fanboy. Check didn't even look up from his phone when talking to me. He must have dealt with losers like me for 15 years or so. He was on autopilot, basically. He did tell me he thought Chelsea were going to win 3-1 though, which in hindsight might be a sign that he's suffering the side effects from Stephen Hunt knocking him out still. The game kicks off and I'm positioned in the room with the TVs and I can hear the crowd from outside. Alright, it's not as good as being in the stands, but hey, I'll take it. I'm watching us do that thing where we pass the ball around for ages without going anywhere before I feel a tap on my shoulder. Hey, you're needed in the kitchen. There's 50 pots of unused ketchup and mustard that need emptying into the bin. Oh fuck off. Oh. So after setting the world record for fastest sauce emptying time, I managed to get back out and watch the end of the first half. Half time, I return to my corner of the kitchen. I get out at the start of the second half, but not long into it, I get sent back down to the bottom floor of Wembley. While in the storeroom, my phone starts having a fit in my pocket, which can only mean that Telemans has spanked one in from 30 yards and we're about to bottle the cup again. What a day at work this is turning out to be. As the minutes ticked on, I realised I was probably going to need to get out of here soon. No way I was going to be cleaning plates after this result. I tell my manager I'm not feeling well and I need some fresh air. And he lets me out onto the concourse of level 2. I start watching the game through a door before a steward sees me and lets me in just in time to see Michael make a worldy save from Mount. This was incredible. I was getting paid to watch my team at Wembley and it's our best spell of the game and we've got about five attackers on and we're doing what we should have done all game, moving the ball about and showing some energy, asking questions, showing fight, then the ball falls to chill well. Oh yes, come on. That was well worth the seven hours in the kitchen. We've rescued it at the death. We'll go on to win it now. Everything will be all right. Oh no, 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 fuck off, fuck this. I'd not seen my team score in 470 days and that moment was the first time I'd felt that special buzz only following a football team can bring and it was ripped away from me because some big nerd wanted his moment in the spotlight. To make it worse, I was probably cleaning the plate of the wanker who thought VAR was a good idea so they can get right in the bin. The game ends and now I'm generally not feeling well. My boss lets me go early and in my angry state I get lost in the depths of Wembley on my way out. My mates meet me with a can of Stella and try and get me to go on Sky Sports to promote the channel, but I just wasn't in the mood. We walk through a crowd of jubilant Leicester fans to the pub for a drink in the pissing rain as I try and squeeze the fact I met Peter Check into every conversation and we try and convince ourselves that they got lucky with VAR and we'll beat them on Tuesday and we'll win the Champions League and we won't remember this horrible crushing loss. It's just a game at the end of the day, innit? <laughs> We're gonna play football.